Goldie Blocks is on a mission to inspire girls all around the world to be makers, coders, engineers, and build the future. From the very beginning at Goldie Blocks, we had so much success in creating video. Um, and we were just doing it because we were just a bunch of young people who didn't come from the toy industry, who didn't really even know any better. We're like, how do we get our message of the mission of our company out into the world? And we did it by making viral videos that happen to go viral. And so uh, in looking at expanding and kind of one day building into this bigger franchise, uh, started to realize like, well, in many ways, Goldie Blocks is just as well known, if not more well known for our videos than our toys. I mean, people loved our videos and our videos are what, you know, have brought parents to tears and signing up to be part of the movement. And we just started to wonder, like, can we take the same skill set that we've always had, this incredible storytelling through video, but instead of targeting parents, let's make videos for kids. And it just started as an experiment because we had been spending years trying to figure out who is this character Goldie? How would we make Goldie like the 21st century role model for girls? Like how could we get every little girl around the world to say, I wanna grow up and be like Goldie instead of you know Elsa or Hannah Montana? And uh, we had just like, PowerPoint deck after PowerPoint deck of just like, who is Goldie, right? Like, who is her character? What is she all about? Like, what are her dreams? It drew from so many of my life experiences and so much of the research that I'd done on what keeps girls out of STEM fields. And we just packed it all into this character. And it was just like sitting on shelves in the office. And we were just like waiting. Can we get some big, huge company to come and make a big animated TV show for us? And we had many conversations and all this talk and nothing happening. We're just sitting and waiting and waiting. And finally, we're like, you know what? Why don't we just open up our own production studio? And why don't we just cast a girl to play the character of Goldie? And why don't we just put it up on YouTube and just like give it a try, you know? And, uh, and so we did. And we auditioned about 80 girls to play the character of Goldie. And uh, there was only one that I, I, I watched the tape and I just had goosebumps because I'm like, oh my gosh, this girl is just so authentic. Like I felt like she was like mini me. <laughs> Like, and her mom is actually an engineer. And so it was just this like amazing opportunity to work with this young, at the time she was 14 year old girl, and starting to just film this content with her where we tried using a script and we just like threw that in the trash can right away because when she improvised on camera and you watched her, it was like, you're talking to your best friend. And when we worked with her, we, ins we would direct her and we were instilling all these values from all of these stacks of decks that we had had in our office about, hey, you're gonna fail. You're not gonna get this project right every time. You're gonna mess it up and you're not gonna let it get to you and you're gonna laugh about it and then you're gonna move on and, and go make something else. You know, because we want girls to not be afraid of failing and we want them to know that you know, failure is just like a necessary part of being an engineer or an entrepreneur or CEO. Um, we would put a big, you know, big smear of glitter on our face before every episode because we wanted to show, you know, this is a girl who gets messy. She gets her hands dirty and, you know, she's not a perfect princess. Um, and the other thing that we would do with her is we would have her using power tools. Like we had her saw, use an electric saw to carve a giant watermelon in half. And so it's just, it's been so fun working with her and it's totally resonating. Like she now gets recognized in the street and little girls walk up to her and ask for her autograph. A couple of the craziest meetings I've ever had in my professional career, sitting uh, in you know a giant conference room, and I'm not gonna name names, but with some of the biggest executives in kids entertainment who are just looking across from me after just the incredible movement that, you know, my team and I have built with Goldie Blocks. It's this undeniable movement and this desire for this type of content and these types of products. And these executives are just looking at me in the eye saying, I make a lot of money on the pink aisle. And um, I get it, you have parents behind you, but girls are really never gonna like this kind of thing. And I keep, like, I was just so angry. I felt like I had like steam coming out of my, my face. And um, 
but it's those moments where it's like, it's so meta, but it's like, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, what would Goldie do? And like we, and we always say to the like, what would Goldie do? You know, would she give up? Would she just like walk out and, you know, like, you know, like, no, like she would just DIY it. She would totally DIY it. And that's the amazing thing about platforms like YouTube and Instagram and Kickstarter. I mean, these are the platforms that have enabled Goldie Blocks to be successful because what we're trying to do is just goes completely against conventional wisdom in the kids toy and entertainment industry. I mean, they just, for so many years, this is just, they've believed that kids don't like this kind of stuff. The thing that I've sort of realized now is a lot of the big gatekeepers, they, uh, they themselves love the mission of Goldie Blocks and they root for it, but they're very risk averse. They've made a lot of money you know, selling pink and princesses to girls and it's sort of this wash, rinse, repeat thing and they don't often get rewarded for taking risks. And so uh, it takes startup companies and disruptors like Goldie Blocks to just go out and just do it on their own and DIY it. And then uh, with all of that success, it gives those you know big executives at that those big companies the data to back up you know probably stuff they've been wanting to do all along that for for many many reasons have had difficulty to do. So uh, I would say Goldie Blocks is welcoming <laughs> partnerships. You know we're not like ah oh, we don't want to work with any of the big folks, but I think we've had to work really hard to prove ourselves and to prove that there is massive demand and there's this huge generational shift for this type of content and it's about time. We've started to work with all kinds of brands to partner and uh, push our social mission forward, and it's been awesome. One of my favorite examples is we recently partnered with Lida Hill Philanthropies. They have a mission to get young girls interested in science, so you couldn't have found a more like-minded partner. And we came up with an entire series together that we're launching on our YouTube channel, where in each episode, a young girl goes on a day in the life adventure with two women in amazing STEM careers. In our first episode that we just aired, actually a couple days ago, we meet a food scientist at Beyond Meat, and we meet a, a CEO architect of Cool House Ice Cream. And so the young girl in the episode meets both women, gets to see where she works, have an on-the-job challenge, and then at the end of the episode, she can only choose one woman to be her mentor. And we've just packed these episodes with kid YouTube influencers who have millions and millions of subscribers. And it's been a great way to uh, you know, utilize these characters on YouTube that kids are already obsessed with. And we've picked these YouTubers who have a genuine interest in these topics. And so we're introducing STEM to kids in a way that is incredibly relevant, native to them. It's the type of content they'd love watching anyway. And it incorporates all these awesome brands who also want to highlight the incredible women who work at their companies and showcase the kinds of jobs that these kids could have and you know, expand their dreams of what they could become when they grow up. Now, all of these new partners have been, you know, our phone is practically ringing off the hook because there are so many brands who are now coming to us and saying, can we highlight the women at our companies to be in the show? You know, we have incredible women who are designing shoes and, you know, we have women designing artificial intelligence and like all this awesome stuff. So, uh, so that's just been one perfect example of a way that we can work with brands and the brands can get their stories out to the kids and families that are watching Goldie Blocks, as well as all of the press writing about it, and we can introduce girls to these incredible role models. I think we've always been a media company, but we, but now having our own production studio in LA with a dedicated team pumping out regular content on a daily basis, I would say we are now full on a media company. And our brand is now so well known and loved, it's enabled us to partner with amazing companies who are manufacturing products on our behalf. And so that 
that's enabling us to scale much larger beyond where we first started with construction toys, now into arts and crafts kits, into monthly subscription boxes, and more and more categories. And that also offers a great opportunity for brands as well because there are so many brands that have come to us now that we can partner with on the content side, but then we can also offer kind of a tangible hands-on experience as well through all of our products. You know, the thing is that having a mission-driven business, I think, uh, and wanting to generate profits and have great returns for our investors, those are not mutually exclusive. And in fact, I think that uh, being a social entrepreneur and having such a strong mission behind Goldie Blocks has been such an enormous asset for so many reasons. One, access to talent. The people that we've been able, able to hire on our team, as well as bringing onto our board, are exceptional. Like People can't believe the talent that I've been able to bring on who are willing to come over and come work at Goldie Blocks and be a part of it for far below what they could easily make anywhere else because they love the idea of being able to get up every morning and feel proud of what they do. And the brand partners that are now excited to work with us they're working with us because they want to be part of the mission. These CMOs and CEOs of other companies, they want to make a difference in the world. And a lot of them have daughters. And a lot of them are sick of what's been out there for their daughters. And, uh, and so I think that as I think about uh, the growth of the company so far anyway, and knock on wood, the more good that we make and the more we stay true to our social mission and deliver on it, actually the better the business does and the more everyone profits. Yeah, I have to say that Goldie Blocks resonates with so many different audiences in ways that I'd never expect. You know, I knew of course women and young women and moms would, would get into it, but to see dads brought to tears by this idea. I mean, that's been one thing that has amazed me and made me just like, it's so fun. To, these dads, they love their daughters so much. So many of our investors are dads of daughters. So many of our customers and uh, some of our um, most talented team members, and they just, they flock to this mission because I think in many ways Goldie Blocks gives them a way they can connect with their daughters that they've never been able to do with other kids' content and products. I guess what I'd say to the brand community about why partner with Goldie Blocks, you know, I think we all have a limited time on this planet and, you know, we all are in this incredibly, um, wonderful position to be able to pick and choose kind of who we work with, how we spend our time and our resources. And so it's exciting to think about uh, the impact Goldie Blocks has already made, but we've just really barely scratched the surface. And so working with us means you really get to make a tangible difference in actual girls' lives. You know, and you get to talk about it, and we can pat ourselves on the back with all the adults about what a great thing that we did. But to be able to actually touch and impact girls and to then get to see all the letters and videos and handwritten notes that come flowing in afterward, I mean, nothing feels better. And uh, the last thing I'll say is that what I love maybe most about uh, building Goldie Blocks is uh, uh, the impact that we're making, this huge change, this generational shift, and closing this gender gap is something that we'll get to see, I'll get to see in my own lifetime. And that's so rewarding. There have been many big audacious dreams for Goldie Blocks, some of which we've already achieved. Super Bowl commercial, yes. Macy's Thanksgiving Day float, yes. First toy on Mars, not yet, but maybe. Uh, but I think the biggest dream ha is and continues to be, you know, I want Goldie Blocks to become a global franchise as ubiquitous as Barbie or Disney Princess. And I want every little girl around the world to grow up, maybe after her princess phase, she has her Goldie Blocks maker phase. And unlike the princess phase, the Goldie Blocks phase is something that could actually spark a lifelong curiosity, give these girls grit and confidence and just so many better advantages in life.